Hi everyone, it's Carl from Mantella Environmental Education. Now here you can see behind me we're in an area of wet woodland where there's a, the edge of a small pond and we're going to be looking for some aquatic invertebrates in the autumn. Now just like the land-based or terrestrial invertebrates that we found in some ancient woodland on a previous video, they can be a little bit more tricky to spot, but if you get out on a mild day with a pond net and some catching equipment like sampling trays, um, you can find quite a good range of aquatic invertebrates. And we'll classify these in exactly the same way we did with the woodland invertebrates. So we'll look at whether they have legs or no legs. If they do have legs, by counting the number of legs, that can help identify whether it's maybe an insect or an arachnid uh, or some other uh, group of invertebrate. Now a very cool aquatic invertebrate to begin with uh, is what appears to be an insect that's living inside a case of rotting vegetation, so needles from pine trees and bits of bark and branch. And this is a caddisfly larva. So you'll see it's reaching out there with its six legs to gather other bits of vegetation to pull in and glue together to form a protective case. And this is a case bearing caddisfly larva. Now these are found in the bottom of still waters like lakes and ponds, and they're usually active in low light levels or at night time. Um, so it's quite unusual to see one active during the day. And you can see it's an insect because when it stretches out, it's got six legs. Now this is the young larva or aquatic phase of a caddisfly. Um, after a few years living in the water, and of course being underwater, it survives by breathing using gills, which extract oxygen from the water. Uh, a bit like a fish, it'll actually emerge from the water into an actual caddisfly with four wings. And you'll quite often in the summer months find caddisflies flying around uh, fresh water like ponds and lakes and things. And they're flying around looking for mates to lay their eggs into the water. And of course when their eggs hatch, they develop into these case bearing caddisfly larvae. Another aquatic invertebrate that's very common in still lakes and ponds, especially where there's a really thick muddy bottom and lots of rotting leaf litter from trees and shrubs around the margins of the lake or pond, are these. These are sometimes called water slaters or hog lice. And just like the common shiny wood lice we met in the ancient woodland, these are crustaceans. So they have 10 legs and they're actually related to crabs that you find at the coast. But by living in the water, these are 100% aquatic and they breathe using gills, rather like a fish. Unlike our woodlouse, which lived on land and breathed there using lungs, just like we have. And these hog lice are very, very common where there's a lot of rotting vegetation in a pond or a lake. And that means there's not a lot of dissolved oxygen in the water for other aquatic invertebrates to use. And these very small red worms are called blood worms or tubifex worms. And just like our hog lice, these are found in ponds or lakes with a really thick, muddy, sludgy bottom. So they're also very common in lakes and ponds with a low oxygen content in the water. So they like kind of smelly lakes and ponds. And these are right at the bottom of the food chain as well. These are the aquatic equivalent of our wood lice and our millipedes in that they actually eat rotting vegetable matter, rotting leaves and bits of bark and things that land in the water. And they poop that out of soil or compost. So these are part of the recycling team at the bottom of a pond. And these are the larvae or the caterpillar stage, <clears throat> the immature stage. So when they mature, they actually leave the water and they are midges. So this is the larval or caterpillar stage of the midge. Now slithering and sliding across the base of the tub here is a freshwater flatworm. They're sometimes called planarians and these are very simple invertebrates with a soft body rather like an earthworm but they're completely unrelated to earthworms and they're flattened from belly to back. And they have a triangular shaped head with very simple eyes that can really only pick up whether it's daytime or nighttime. And these are some of the predators that you'll find at the base of a pond. And they'll prey on things like the water fleas and those 
uh, tube effects worms, the blood worms. And they'll use, they'll find their prey by following chemical scent trails in the water. So they're gliding along there just looking for something to eat. And they're usually quite dark on their back and paler on their belly. And we've got a second one hiding right down in the corner here that's a slightly different colour just under that hog louse there. And he's slowly sliding along the surface of the tub. And if you look very closely towards his head end, he's got two little pale spots. And that's where his eyes are. So they're really well camouflaged in amongst the sludge and the mud and the rotting leaves. And these are usually very, very common in freshwater ponds. And here we have an abundance of water fleas, or Daphne as they're sometimes called. And water fleas aren't like fleas you'll find on your dog or cat. These only survive in the water. And they're actually a crustacean. So they're very closely related to the uh, hog louse that we met just a few moments ago. And these can be found in their billions in freshwater lakes and ponds all throughout the year. Again, if the weather is suitably warm, they're quite active as they are here. And they're found right at the bottom of the food chain. So these are the equivalent of a rabbit or a deer in a pond. They're herbivores and they only eat plant material. They eat microscopic green plants called algae, which we can't actually see with our naked eye. So they're right at the bottom of the food chain eating those algae. And that means that lots of slightly larger pond animals feed on the water fleas. So things like water boatmen and diving beetles. Here we have a pond snail. These are very like the snails you'll find in your garden or in, in woodlands and a whole different range of habitats, but these are aquatic. And of course, because they spend all of their life in the water, they don't breathe using lungs like garden snails or slugs. They breathe using gills like a fish. And they also have those two pairs of tentacles. The longer part at the top have those little simple eye spots to allow them to detect whether it's night or day. And the lower pair of tentacles are used to feel and to smell their way through the water to find plant material. Now these are herbivores or plant eaters, just like our, our water fleas. And they'll graze that green algae, just like our water fleas, but they'll also eat uh, aquatic vegetation, as well as rotting plant material as well. So they're right down at the bottom of the food chain. And these would be eaten, the smaller snails would be eaten by things, larger predators like sticklebacks and diving beetles. So here we have the young stage of a damselfly called a nymph. So this is a damselfly nymph. And all these underwater insects can be quite difficult to identify. You'll see a smaller damselfly nymph walking um, above the larger one there, along the edge of the tub. And if you look very closely, the smaller damselfly nymph has three long, what appear to be tails, whereas the larger damselfly nymph in the centre there has only two. It should actually have three. The middle one has broken off, and this sometimes happens, um, that those tail filaments can actually snap off and make identification a little bit more difficult. But if you notice, each one of those tail filaments is quite flat, and they actually function like a fish's gill and whenever they swim, um, they absorb oxygen through those gills into their body, just the way fish would, um, by pushing water through their gills as they swim. So those flattened tail filaments are actually gills that the young dragonfly nymphs use to breathe. And the reason these are different sizes, you can see the smaller one just moving out of frame there, is that the larger one is simply older. It's had a longer time underwater to find more food and to grow. And when the eggs of damselflies are laid under the water, they can they hatch into these small nymphs. They can take as many as four or five years to mature, to grow underwater and mature sufficiently large size so that they can then emerge as an adult damselfly, which of course is a flying insect out in the open air. Now you'll see there's three pairs of legs that identifies this as an insect. And it also has quite a broad angular head and they have powerful jaws on the underside. 
that they can use to catch their prey. So these are predatory pond insects. And they also have very, very good eyesight to allow them to see where their prey is and also to spot predators. And they do have two small antennae poking out the front of their head. You can maybe just see them there, but they are quite fine and they're quite small. Now you may have noticed earlier on when our smaller damselfly nymph moved through the water, it was swimming, they swim by flicking their abdomen. That's this long bit between the head, the legs and those tail filaments. They flick that abdomen from side to side like a fish. You see those flat tail filaments side on there. And if it was a slightly different type of underwater insect nymph, then maybe something like a beetle larva or a mayfly nymph, those tail filaments would be very, very narrow and tube-like. Um, and also when they swim, the abdomen would be moved up and down. So when you're identifying a lot of these difficult aquatic insects, the number of tail filaments, the shape of the tail filaments, and also how they swim can help to tell them apart. Here you can see another damselfly nymph. You can see those three flattened tail filaments. And these are larvae of a very common species of damselfly called a common blue damselfly. And you'll see from the photo, it gets the name from the blue, that bright sky blue coloration interspersed with black bands. So it's a beautiful and very common damselfly in freshwater ponds and lakes all throughout Ireland. Now the two worm-like animals in the frame at the moment, the, dark, the smaller, darker one coming up towards the water surface is another freshwater flatworm, which we met previously, but the larger paler brown worm-like animal on the bottom of the tub with the narrower head end is actually a freshwater leech. And leeches are a completely different type of worm to our flatworm. You'll see disappearing down to the bottom right. And you'll see the flatworms are, they glide almost like a slug or a snail very gracefully, whereas the leech here moves in a very different way if you watch. It's got a very narrow pointed head and the underside of that head it has a small sucker and it'll stretch out and it'll latch on to the bottom of the tub with that sucker and once it latches on it'll, it'll then pull the rest of its body along and on its tail end it also has a second sucker. So they move by expanding and contracting their bodies just like you can see here and they use those tail and head suckers to hold on to the substrate so they don't get buffeted away in the water current. Um, so they move by alternating the use of these two suckers and expanding and contracting their body. And if you were to look very closely, they actually have a segmented body, which looks like they have lots of little rings all the way around their body, just like an earthworm. And they're actually very closely related to the earthworms. And at the very front of their body, they have small eyes called eye spots. And the number and arrangement of these eye spots can be used to identify the exact species of leech. But that's usually something that you would do under the microscope. It's quite difficult to do. Um, so these are, most leeches are found in freshwater habitats, especially here in Ireland. You see a flatworm for comparison just to the left there with a triangular head and the two pale eye spots. Very different animal indeed. And a few leech species in different parts of the world live in marine habitats, so at the sea, and a few also live on land, such as the famous medicinal leech, which can suck blood. But these freshwater leeches that we have in Ireland are nothing to worry about. They'll not do us any harm at all. Their main prey are small aquatic invertebrates. I mean, some of the larger leech species, can, they can get up to around maybe 10 or 15 centimetres long in some cases. They would prey on some of the larger aquatic invertebrates and even things like tadpoles and small freshwater fish like sticklebacks. Another very common aquatic insect you'll come across in freshwater lakes and ponds are these, the water boatmen. 
And they're so called for two reasons. First of all, their body is actually shaped like the hull of a boat. So they're pointed at one end and they actually have a keel shape on their underside. And you can see they're really powerful swimmers. The other reason why they're called water boatmen is obviously being an insect, they have six legs, but the two rear pair of legs have fringes of hairs that make them look quite broad. And they'll use those like the oars or the paddles of a boat to swim through the water, just like this one is doing. And there are two main types. There's the larger species, which is a greater water boatman, which actually usually swims upside down under the water. So its belly points up and its back points down towards the bottom of the pond. And they are predatory. So they've got large eyes, very good eyesight to spot their prey. And they have sharp pointed piercing mouth parts to catch and kill their prey. And if you catch them, in your pond net, they can actually give you a little bit of a nip, which is quite painful as well. But there are a range of smaller species which swim, if you like, the right way up, with their back pointing up towards the sky. And they don't have those piercing mouth parts that are called lesser water boatmen. And they swim in exactly the same way, but they are herbivores. So they eat algae, which are microscopic green plants in the water, and they'll also eat rotting or decaying plant material such as the water weed here in the water. So one species is predatory, the others are herbivores or plant eaters. And in both species they actually don't have gills to breathe like some of the other aquatic invertebrates we've came across. They actually trap air in a fringe of hers along the back on the sides of their abdomen. And if you watch this water boatman very carefully you'll see little silvery lines along both sides. Those silvery lines are bubbles of air that are caught along those fringes of hers at the side of its body. And periodically, they'll come up to the surface with their tail and they'll suck in more air along those fringe of hers. And that allows them to submerge for an, another period of time and they can draw on those air bubbles that they've trapped. So they actually trap a layer of air along the sides of their abdomen that they use to breathe underwater as an air reservoir. Pretty cool.